everybody. Hope everybody's having a great day. Well, um, on this video, what I want to do is go over um, the thoracic cage, the uh, vertebral column. First, let's go over the vertebral column, which is going to be this model here. Okay. The vertebral column is made up of 26 bones. Um, the vertebra is going to be 24 in total. Okay, 24 vertebra. You're going to have a sacrum, which is right here. And then finally, you're going to have a coccyx. All right. This vertebral column, first of all, it's important because it's going to protect the spinal cord. The spinal cord goes right down the middle of that hole, right through here. Okay. Spinal cord sends signals from your brain down to the brain stem down to the spinal cord and the spinal cord is bound and protected by the uh, the vertebra okay all these individual bones 24 of them all right so let's look at three classifications or categories of vertebra okay you have uh, first of all you have this vertebra here it's called a cervical vertebra okay notice here let me put it down here better Okay, these holes right up there. These holes um, allow the vertebral artery to go to go through it. But that's ca the characteristic, uh, the unique feature of the cervical that it has um, the transverse foramen that none of the other vertebra have. Then you have your, and that's going to be one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, seven cervical vertebra. Okay, so you're going to have seven of these. That's going to be the top. Then you're going to have all these vertebrae here in the middle. Those are called the thoracic vertebrae. And it's going to be 12 thoracic vertebrae. Okay. 12 thoracic vertebrae. And uh, this is what they look like. 12 thoracic vertebrae. Uh, each, uh, each vertebra. Okay. Notice that the spinous process is very long. Almost looks like toucan sand. For all you old uh, people like myself, Toucan Sam from Fruit Loops, <laughs> well, even young. Um, so this will be typical of thoracic. And also what's important for thoracic is that you're going to have the uh, the ribs attached to it. Okay. Then finally, you're going to have uh, the bottom of the last remaining five vertebra here on the bottom. Look how big it is, how thick they are. Uh, those will be called the lumbar vertebra, and that's this is what it looks like. Very big, the biggest of all three of the vertebra. It's got a very thick body, a short stout or a stout spinous process, and this uh, lumbar vertebra is going to support all the vertebra above it, which definitely requires this vertebra to be very thick. Okay. So those are our three types of, of vertebra, but let me go over what's similar to all of them. Let's just do that first. Okay, so notice on, on the, either side here, you have these holes, these holes for the spinal nerves to come out of, because you know the spinal cord goes down the middle. Actually, let me start with that. Uh, the spinal cord goes down this hole called the, uh, uh, the vertebral foramen, vertebral foramen. And you'll notice that in all, all of the vertebrae I just showed you, it's going to have a vertebral frame. Okay. And that's going to allow the spinal cord to go through. Okay. So the vertebral foramen allows the spinal cord to go through. On either side of the uh, spinal cord of the vertebra coming out of the spinal cord, it's going to have, you're going to have the spinal nerves. But the hole that it goes through is called the intervertebral foramen. Another structure that's common between all of them, you're going to have this bone that's sticking out the back. That's called the uh, spinous process. See that? If you ever look at somebody's back, they have these little dots and the little bumps in the back. That's because of the spinous process. And let me show you here. You have the spinous process. Spinous process. Now, this is actually an atlas, which is the C1 vertebra. Um, and the atlas doesn't have a spinous process, but uh, the one just below it would 
wood, and it would be in the back. This would be the back, and it's the front. And there's no body also on the atlas. Um, so, okay, spinous crosses faces, faces towards the back. Um, they're all going to have bodies. Okay, so these are all the bodies. Okay. Bodies, much thicker bodies in the lumbar. Um, and, uh, and I guess what we can say is also in between the body, you're going to have these intervertebral discs, which are made up of fibrocartilage. Okay. It's that padding in between the vertebra and some padding uh, of that uh, intervertebral disc uh, get kind of squished and uh, and you'll see a little bubble coming out of that disc and that's what's called a hernia. Okay. Alright, so that's pretty much what's in common between all of them, uh, all the vertebrae. Now let me just show you this one little thing here, a little model. This is a model of the atlas and the axis. The C1 is going to be called the atlas and the C2 is called the axis. Okay. Um, and now when you hear C's or T's or L's, that just means cervical, thoracic, and lumbar. So C1 will be the atlas and C2 will be the axis. And the axis, I mean the atlas has the skull that sits on it. Okay. That's why they call it the atlas. Like that, uh, that Greek god, Atlas, that holds the, the world on his back. So too does the atlas or the C1 hold the skull on its back. Okay. And then down here we have just below it is the C2 and notice that it has this little, this little bump coming up right there, a little thing that's sticking up. That's called a dens or the dentoid process and the atlas swivels on the dens. Okay, I think that's pretty much it uh, for the vertebra. I think that's all we can really go over. So let's go uh, to the main part of the the, the vertebral um, column, which is going to be the uh, the sacrum, which is this heart-shaped structure right here. And the sacrum used to be individual bones, uh, but during fetal development, they kind of come together and fuse into one sacrum. And just like the vertebra have intervertebral foramen, so to the sacral, but I still said these, call, these are called sacral foramina. Sacral foramen and foramina are the pair. Sacral foramina, sacral foramen. Here you have the median sacral crest, which is also homologous here to the spinous process of the vertebra above it. Okay, and then uh, finally you have this entrance coming down for the uh, spinal cord into, this, into the sacrum. That's called the sacral canal. And exiting here is the sacral hiatus. There's nerves that come out from down here on a, on a much better model. Then finally here you have the three to five coccyx, which are also referred to as the tailbone, okay? which is a remnant of our tail that we used to have, if you believe in evolution. Our reptilian ancestor used to have a tail. So this is, our, uh, this is the tail that's gotten much shorter in our evolutionary process of the human. All right, so I think we're done with that. Let's go now to um, let's go to this connection here real quick between the the ribs and the uh, the ribs and the and the vertebra. Specifically, the ribs articulate with the thoracic vertebra. So let's just do this real quick. Here you have this is the head, the neck, and this is going to be called the. Um, it's called the tubercle of the rib. Wow. Okay. So the head, the neck, and the tubercle of the rib. Okay. Now the head. Yeah. If I would have connected it, I probably would have memorized it, remembered. But the head articulates with the coastal facet. The coastal facet is going to be a portion here. It's pretty bright. I hope we can see it. In the, but this is the coastal facet is on the body, and here on the transverse process you have the transverse coastal facet so the head of the rib articulates with the body uh with the body with the coastal facet and the tubercle of the rib i would have memorized i would have said it there but the tubercle of the rib would have can uh connects here with the transverse coastal facet so head with the uh coastal facet on the body and the tubercle of the rib with the transverse coastal facet and it pretty much does that Okay, so now this is facing, you're looking at the anterior view. This is the posterior with the spinous process. So it would go 
so the back is facing so it's going in the direction that goes in my body so spinous process is in the back so the rib will go here towards the front okay like that and it does it on either side and it does it for all 12 uh, thoracic vertebrae giving you the 12 pairs of ribs okay. all right so we did that connection so let's go ahead and finish up with this part here okay. this model here will give you uh, these are called coastal cartilages okay which is hyaline cartilage okay uh, so you have 12 pairs of ribs the first seven ribs are going to be called the true ribs. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. These are the true ribs. Okay. Then eight, nine, and ten are called the false ribs. Okay. Because the ribs come from the vertebra and come and attach here, like this, to these coastal cartilages. That. So the first seven will be connecting here will be true, false, eight, nine, and ten, and then finally eleven and twelve don't connect to any of the cartilage or the sternum. Those are called the floating ribs. Okay. All right. And then finally, just let's just talk about here. This is the uh, bone that protects your heart. Okay. This thoracic. This is part of the thoracic cage. Okay. And the thoracic cage it protects your lungs, your heart. But the sternum definitely is kind of your breastplate that protects your heart. Okay. You have the sternum, which is made up of the manubrium. Manubrium stands uh, for like steering wheel. Manubrium. Okay, it's round like that, the body, and in the xiphoid process. Xiphoid process, whenever you do uh, CPR, you're supposed to go down here where it goes up at a peak. And you're doing body and xiphoid process is located, so you go two fingers below, and that's where you would apply the CPR. Okay? All right, so that's pretty much it. That's the uh, vertebral column with the vertebra, the, uh, uh, the sacrum, and the coccyx. And then you have the thoracic cage, which is the ribs that come from the vertebra, and then the uh, sternum in the front. Okay, hope you like the video. Hope you understand better uh, the thoracic cage in our vertebral column. And I will check you out on the next video. Take care. Bye.